what is what is the logic or what's the political value but behind this uh, the House Republican opposition to raising the minimum wage? Well, I, I think what they're 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 doing two things. They're, they're they're taking the substantive position that a minimum wage will will hurt the economy and will will cost jobs. And there's very little empirical evidence that would allow them to to come to that conclusion. But that's their position. And and I I also think that it's you know that th- this is part of an ongoing uh, position of theirs that uh, that the the plight of of those who uh, who struggle the pl- even the plight of the middle class uh, is really not among their priorities. I mean they they are uh, focused on uh, on on um, uh, you know a slice of of our society that really has very little to worry about. But they you know. Uh, they seem to think that uh, that they're imperiled and, and that the f- focus of their policies needs to be supporting them. And uh, I mean, so h- how we can say that we can't give a minimum wage uh, increase uh, and yet at the same time and, and also how they want. I mean, they wanted to cut 40 billion dollars out of food stamps. Yeah. Uh, they want to block grant Medicaid. Uh, they want to cut the women's infants and children's nutrition program. I mean, you name it, they want to cut it. Yet at the same time, they protect the corporate welfare that we provide to the oil companies and the, the tax breaks that we provide to, uh, you know, gazillionaire hedge fund managers. So so it's it's um, it's uh, it's it's just their worldview is a worldview that does doesn't include concern for those who are struggling. Is is there something else uh, included in that? In that, the last time we raised a minimum wage uh, to seven twenty five, where it's stuck today, was under George W. Bush. Yep. Republicans voted for it under George W. Yep. Bush. So Barack <clears throat> Obama asked for it, and because it's Barack Obama? I think that's a part of it. I mean, in 2007, 82 Republicans in the House of Representatives voted for the minimum wage. Um, right now, uh, you know, I've filed this discharge petition, as you know, right. uh, to try to move that uh, the, the current bill to the floor. Uh, it's got 191 signatures. Not a one of them is a Republican. Um, and, um, and, and the minimum wage in the Senate in 2007 passed by a margin of, I think, 94 to 3. So historically, this is an issue that's had pretty strong bipartisan support. Uh, and right now, it has become a partisan issue with Democrats supporting it and Republicans refusing to support it. But, you know, the American people pretty overwhelmingly supported it. The most polling shows, you know, pr- approval for an increase in the minimum wage in the high 60s to the low 70s. So uh, a discharge, uh, if I remember, have my math correct, you need, what is it, 218 votes? Yes, to, half of the House plus one. 218, oh, right, half the House plus one, okay. For a discharge position, meaning the way that works, just so all of our viewers and listeners understand, right, the discharge position, as I understand it, if the speaker will not schedule something for a vote on the floor, if you have enough signatures on a discharge position, you can force a vote. Yes, correct. A a discharge petition allows, it it is one of the few tools the minority has to uh, influence the floor schedule. I mean, under normal circumstances, the speaker and the majority leader control the floor schedule. Uh, And so, but if you get 218 signatures on on a discharge petition, that means that that piece of legislation underlying the discharge petition moves to the floor for consideration. It, it is not often used and even even less often is it successful. The last time it was successful was uh, campaign finance reform in 2002. That, that, that came to the floor of the House through a discharge petition. And, mm. and, and in an interesting sort of historical was court. H- Hastert speaker then, I guess? Or? 2002, Just Hastert was speaker. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, an interesting historical footnote. The Fair Labor Standards Act, 1936 or 1937, is what created the minimum wage. That came to the floor of the House oh. by virtue of a discharge petition. So you, so you need 218 for yes. this, and you are now at? 191. Whoa. That's, yeah, you were then striking. Distance. We got a ways, but 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 the key is now. We, how many Democrats are there? There's 199 Democrats. So okay. we have to pick up the remaining eight Democrats, and then yeah. we need 20 eight, uh, 19, 19, um, yeah. uh, 19 Republicans to join us. Do you have any Republicans so far? No, so far, no, no. Have any of them indicated that uh, 
you know, that this little game that they play that if you get <clears throat> close, I'll be the last one, or if you get, uh, you know, whatever. Not, not yet. We're reaching out to Republicans in general. Uh, as I say, there were 82 Republicans that voted for uh, the, uh, the minimum wage in 2007. I think something like 35 or 40 of them are still in the House. So we're certainly we're, we're reaching out to them, and we're also certainly going to try to make sure that we get, you know, the, the, the eight Dems that aren't yet on. Okay, so we're going into we're we're here in 2014 <coughs> mid, midterm elections. Every single member of the House is up for reelection. Uh, so Republicans are saying we're going to go out there and and defend not raising the minimum wage. And you know, I would assume, Congressman, that some of the people who of these Americans who would like to see the minimum wage raised happen to be in red states, right, mm-hmm. or in their districts. I mean, how can they possibly defend this? Well, I, I think a couple of things. I, I think, they, again, I think their worldview is that this hurts small businesses well, and, and, and um, uh, as they I say... Can, you and I both know that's not true. No evidence, but that's... Right. <clears throat> so they, I think they take that position. I also think the districts, so for so many of, of our Republican colleagues, the districts are drawn in such a way uh, that they can take ext- very extreme uh, positions and still and still uh, still prevail in a general election. In fact, most of our Republican colleagues are more worried about a primary from the right than they are about yeah. a general election and, and losing votes on the left. Um, and I also think their their mindset for the for the 2014 election is it's going to be all Obamacare all the time. I mean, they, they're going to I mean, look to yesterday. We voted for the 50th time uh, in the House of Representatives to to defund or eliminate <laughs> all or part. I didn't realize that. Another, yet another vote? Yes. 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 Yeah, like 50 times. Yesterday was the 50th, yes. Could you believe it? Yeah, I think, and I'm stunned that I didn't know about that, but I think it's gotten to the point that people aren't even reporting it anymore, Well, it's old news. I mean, it's old old news. I mean, and and it's, you know, I mean, how often do you report the exact same story? (laughs) Right. The definition of insanity? Yeah. Right. But, you know, I have to say, I worked years ago for Governor Jerry Brown in in, uh, California in his first term, and that's the first time that I dealt, you know, how long ago that was. And it's the first time I dealt with this argument from the business community. You can't raise a minimum wage because it's going to, you're going to lose jobs. It's going to, and I remember looking into it then, and there was no evidence. And now this is like 30 years later, and there's still no yeah. evidence I mean, that that has ever happened. It's one of the most heavily studied areas that economists look at. And there just isn't a body of evidence that says that if you raise the minimum wage, you're going you're gonna to lose jobs. It, it just isn't there. Uh, and, and if you look at the state of Washington, which has one of the highest minimum wages in the country, it, it simply hasn't happened. And one of the interesting things is economists have studied states – uh, that that join one another, where one state has a higher minimum wage than the other, yeah. and they've even mm-hmm. studied the counties that oh, line right, up really? against yeah. one another. And there's no loss of jobs in the counties that have a higher minimum wage. There's no migration of businesses from one county to another. It, it, so it's just not there. But what is there is if you raise the minimum wage, you're putting more money in the hands of people who live paycheck to paycheck, and it, you know, it and just stands to reason that they're going to spend it. More mo- sure. And when we have an economy that is 70 percent rooted in consumer spending if we're going to put more hands in the money of people who are likely to spend it that's going to lift the economy 